What is good, Josh? I'm the school game, man. Back in there with yet another Saints video here today, baby. And let me know what you guys are thinking of the series down below. Is it exciting? Are y'all excited for it? Are y'all waiting to see me finally win one of these? I know I am, bro. Like, the offseasons are fun and all, but they're more fun after a Super Bowl victory. When you go to the playoffs and lose, you're kind of confused because you don't really got the capital to be doing a whole lot of good stuff. But, hey, we do got a whole lot of money this year. 53.2 million is the most we've had in the series. So, I'm safe to say we fixed the cap problems at the very least. Now, we got mock draft number three here up on the board. And it looks like it's on white. Look at that. Two receivers off the back. Josh Martinez is going in the first three as well as Trent Fisher. Two quarterbacks in the top five. Receiver heavy draft this time. You see Jason Waters at 11. Another QB uh, to New York. It looks like for us, they got him taking left outside linebacker Dylan Kinney, uh, who's the first round talent. Now, as far as the people that are on my board, I do have a bunch of people that I am going to start adding to my board. Uh, going through this kind of like draft class a little bit more. Uh, my number one pick would be, I'd love to get Sean Hayden, but he, he's a top five product. He'll probably go up here, at least in the top 10. He just know he's falling back to, where do we pick again, 22? I doubt he's falling that far back. Let's just be honest. But things have kind of changed up, I guess you could say, from the first one. We're getting a cornerback here, which I think we still probably might do with our first pick. We had mock draft one, we were the top, top five pick. We could have picked up a quarterback if I wanted to, or Sean Hayden. But it looks like Anton Wright's been like the leader of the class, at least two of the three draft classes. Uh, Josh Martinez got up there on that one, but still back to number one. So probably gonna be another good year for receivers. Can't wait to see how the rest of the mock drafts play out, but we've got other things to go ahead and take care of before we go in and start worrying about the draft because it is re-signed players week. Nothing big really happened when it came to like, you know, staffs hiring and firing, a couple of teams fired their uh, coaches. So I think it was like Washington and uh, Detroit. I think they fired like the whole entire staff head coach, offensive coordinator, and defensive coordinator. So that wasn't good for them. Let's look at, and look at these retirements really quick. Oh, Marquise Mingo, Trent Williams. We already know Cameron Jordan. Oh, KJ Wright. Oh, Malcolm Jenkins, Demario Davis. Dang. Well, I guess that's why we got some more cap space. I did not expect to see them, them boys leave. Julio's out as well. Von Miller, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, who finished his career on the Broncos. Who else is done here? I saw Randall Cobb, Tom Brady finally gone. Y'all see that in real life too? Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section of Tom Brady finally retiring. That was in 22 long seasons of grinding, working. The man is definitely up there in top three quarterbacks. He's probably number two behind Drew Brees. Um, yes, I said Drew Brees, and I'm going to hold that all the way to the end of time. Offensive corner to retire. That's the first. I've never seen that one, but good. shout out to you. Bruce Arians retired as well, so that explains why he got fired. Um, because I did see him on the fire list, but wow. Pretty long list of some surprising names too. And here we are back with our player signing. So we got Adam Troutman, Zach Bond, who I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna let go. Uh, Eric Burrow, Dylan Schuer, James Hurst, so I'm letting go. Lorenzo Neal, think about letting him go. Yeah, I think everybody here is basically gonna get let go, except for Adam Troutman. I'm gonna try to re-sign him here. It might take us two free agency to get him. I'll give them, I'll do four years. I can I can handle having two good backups for four seasons. Let's up the money. Let's not be disrespectful with it. Uh let's go eight, let's go 8.3. Will you sign that? Wow, you're gonna be greedy and not just it's point one less. All right. Go to free agency and we'll see if we can pick up somebody else over there. Uh but yeah, everybody else here is basically gonna go ahead and get cut as we go ahead and go into next week and see what this free agency pool is looking like. Dog finally got some money to spend. First thing I want to do is go ahead and check out our lineup. See where we can improve. You see three of our five offensive linemen are, you know, starred up or better. Two over here that aren't, but they're still pretty good. 82 and 79 overall. Uh, I believe in our tight end, uh, D'Angelo Stewart's already worked up to an 80 overall. That man is turning to a beast. Definitely got to get another backup though over there. Fill up that spot. Obviously, we got MT, Deontay Harris, uh, Traquan Smith, Cole Stewart. I feel very strong about receiving core from one through six. Marcus Callaway can make plays. Quan Baker can make plays. I feel comfortable about our uh, running back core right here, one and two. Uh, I'm cool with these four being here, so not forcing a running back pick at all. Uh, and then Josh Garland. I mean, 84 overall, but we got to find some way to get you better than normal overall. Maybe you'll start playing a little bit better, too. Defensively, Marcus Williams, uh, CJ Gardner Johnson. I'm cool with y'all two up there at safety. Uh, let's see, linebacker core. Needs to be worked on. I mean, 73. 66. I haven't really seen too much good play from either one of y'all. Sean Dobbs is going to hold it down. And now we got to get another middle linebacker to kind of back that up as well. 
corners I feel strongly about. Paulson and Debo obviously had that chance to upgrade. He must not have done it because he's still only normal dev, but he did a good job this season. Just want to get more depth over there. And the defensive line obviously took a big hit with Cameron Jordan retiring. So we got to go ahead and fix that more so in depth terms. Like we got Reggie Holt, we got Marcus Davenport, uh, Tim Settle, hope we can hold it down, David Onyemata, but Peyton Turner is pretty much the only confident backup that I see we have. So that's going to be emphasis need. So backup, um, backup in talent, edge rush talent, two good outside linebackers, a backup middle linebacker, cornerback depth, mostly work on the defense, even though we have the number one defense. And honestly, offensively, I'm not seeing anything other than just getting another uh, backup tight end that's going to fix this unless there's a blockbuster quarterback on the list. I'm not opposed to trading Josh Garland for somebody good. I'm telling you that right now. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. That boy Chase Young is on the market. He's on the market. We got Stephon Gilmore, too, as well. That's that's some good corner. We can go with a win now approach. I mean, I'm just saying, James Bradbury. Uh, we got Fletcher Cox, obviously, as well on here. Eric Kendricks. Now, a lot of these dudes are older. Chase Claypool. A lot of older people on here. Um, so let's see what we can do. Quarterback. Is there anybody good? Anybody? Jimmy Grove. Jay ah, hey, I'll, I'll get Jalen Hurts now. I'm working. Cook. If I was actually playing. Uh, since I'm not playing, yeah, now we're going to go ahead and stick things out, thug it out with Josh Garland, let him go ahead and have his spot. Uh, running back, I said we were straight over there. Uh, let's go wide outs. We're good. Tight ends. Now, is there any? Ooh, Adam Trump has got quite a bit of bids. Is there any way we can get him back? Uh, 27 years old. Let's see. Is there any other better options, though? I mean, obviously, there are worse overalls there. 26, 27, 25. Yeah, that's probably going to be, like, the best we can do. Honestly, for the age too. So let's go ahead and try to see if we can sign him back. Uh, four years, eight point seven. What kind of? That's a ninety-two point deal. And wow, okay, they're they're overpaying Adam Troutman here. All right, I'm not gonna sacrifice uh, some other moves that can be made, but I definitely want to try to make this a move if we can. That's ninety-five points. There we go. We on top. All right, we're gonna stick right there. I might come back and make it a little bit better later. Uh, if, if you want to tempt me on this one, you gotta have you. And a good overall. Ooh, 26 years old, 77. Ah. Ah, uh, that's just. I mean, that'll do it. <laughs> that, that, that right there will do it. I'm just trying to tell you. 25 year old. I mean, we got a really young starter over there, so it's not like it matters that much. I'm not too worried about our backups uh, in that position. We got a backup growing right there. Backup here would be nice, just so I don't got to worry about drafting one. Ooh, 24 years old. 69 overall, I'll take that. Harold Mims, just a nice backup contract here. Give him three years. See if we can get him cheaply. You know what I'm saying get a good backup center. Start developing. He might get to like a mid-70. I think I gotta make this. I gotta make this backup sign too, man. Mike Franklin, 24, one year older, but 10 overall points better. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta try to make this sign too. Two years. Drop that down. I know we're offering low ball contracts these two. I could probably go even lower because I doubt anybody's gonna be wanting to sign them. Here go the biggest one, man. Oh, not, not this side. Bro, I'm just saying, how do I say no? How do I say no? How do I not at least entertain the thought about going to get this man Chase Young? Him and Marcus Davenport on the edges, and then I can bring Reggie Holt in like he did last year for that nickel, um, nickel defensive tackle role, pass rushing defensive tackle. Yo, our pass, we weren't seeing, I wasn't seeing a whole lot of sacks. We got a pretty decent amount of sacks. I wasn't seeing a lot of sacks in that Dallas game. You saw we were getting maybe, I think we had like two sacks total that game. We didn't get really a whole lot of pressure like I would like. Let's entertain the thought. If I go in here, that that takes up a huge chunk. If I offer him exactly what he wants, 91 points on that offense. Yo, we're eighth place. Goodness gracious. Hold on, let me work a deal. Hold up. There you go. That's the deal. Five years, 114 million, 73.3 million in bonus. If we do this, bro, hey, I'm just saying, if we pull this, if we pull that signing off, you can't tell me we ain't about to make it spike. Okay, 25 years old, almost 10 overall points better. Let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, obviously, we need somebody to kind of back him up. It, it really, age really doesn't matter. Somebody that can come in and still be good. So we probably go somebody down here, like 26 years old. I obviously don't want to drop off too much. Let's look at these outside linebackers because these, these will come in and be starters, basically. 
That's why this is a little bit more important. Let's say 25. And then corner, we just need a backup. So let me go back, left outside linebacker. I could draft somebody though. You know, that's where my thinking is. Like I can draft somebody to be a starter. So maybe we just get one starter, Clavy and Chaston right here. Four years. I'm cool with 23.6 million. How much is, is that 91 point deal? Is that enough for first? Okay, okay, I'll handle that. Uh, now here, obviously there's gonna be somebody that's not coming in to start. Uh, so maybe somebody on like a cheap deal, like maybe a Bobby Wagner. Somebody that could come in cheaply, maybe even play the sub linebacker role. Ah, I don't know. I mean, John Brown, obviously, I mean, he's not that bad, 68 overall. So, I mean, I could just go draft one, save up the money. But I think I'm gonna draft the right uh, outside linebacker anyway. I think we take the chances here with probably letting Pete Warner start. Let's go middle linebacker. Let's try to get somebody some kind of capable. You want to go Gerard Davis, Ruben Foster. Maybe, mm, I feel like if I'm going to go old, I might as well go Bobby Wagner. If I'm going to go old and go try to go like a cheap one year deal, I might as well hit Bobby Wagner up. Keep the bonus above the salary, 64 point offer. But ain't nobody else bidding for you, so you better go ahead and accept that. Cornerback is now the last spot, and we just want depth here. Somebody that can come in and play a slot role. So is anybody like a slot archetype? Zone, zone, man, zone, zone, man, 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 zone, slot. 78 overall, Justin Coleman, 31 years old. I mean, I'm not mad. Oh, but I'm not mad at that, but look at it. 27 years old. I mean, at least at 26. How young can we get? 26 years old, that at least gives you a couple more years to still keep getting better. 26 star, 26 star, they're both 79s, both man coverage. Let me look at the actual ratings though now, hold up. All right, so rating, 81, 76. I can take that, pause, 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 y'all ain't hear that. Um, 86, 74, Darnay Holmes, Darnay Holmes. Come here for a four year, $20.7 million deal. 97 point deal. And we on top. Let's go. I think that's it. That's all we got to do right there. The rest we can handle in the draft. Let me go back top 100. My negotiations, just so we know, we're offering to Chase Young. Five years, under 14 million. That looks like a pretty sizable gap to where we should get him. Huge gap here for Darnell Holmes. Uh, Bobby Wagner, we're the only one. Huge gap there as well. Huge gap there as well. And like I said, the only one uh, bidding for these two. So let's see how round one of signings go. Hopefully, we're able to get some of these players. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Ah, oh, man. Come on, bro. He declined our offer. We gave the most amount of money. That's. I wish it at least like showed you what they accepted or something. Lost left us a linebacker too as well. Adam Trauma went somewhere else as well. I don't understand why we offered literally the most money for them. At least we got our backup corner, backup middle linebacker, and backup center. Hoorah. Here we are with mock draft number four again. Looks like for the most part, things are staying the same. Hayden dropped down. Sharon Fisher dropped out of the top five. Jason Waters jumping into the top 10. Goodness gracious. All right, where they got us? 22 again. Picking it right in. Michael Murray dropping five picks. I wonder where the dude went that they had us getting. He was an outside linebacker, right? Who was it? Let me see. Dylan Kenny. I don't think I saw him on there, so he must have dropped out of the first round entirely. That's not a good sign right before you get to the draft. That means that combine and that pro day were not it. Speaking of which, we got both those results up now, and there were uh, some decisions I wanted to make. I don't know if I'm still going to go with this position group, but it'll kind of let me on a little insight of what if I should or not. Woo! This is what I was talking about. A day three running back running 447, 447 the second time. Got three people slower, but day three. I mean, if it's fifth, sixth round, we don't got nothing else to do. That might be the move. Well, I found the fastest player in the draft. <laughs> Very high on my board, cornerback Junior Gore. Yeah. I don't, what he, he only has good speed too. How do you have good speed, but just ran 431, which is first among all cornerbacks? I mean, maybe that's why, because that's as fast as cornerbacks go. Maybe the receivers and running backs doing something crazy this year. Because good speed to me, there's still two. There's still two tiers about that. Great and elite. Elite must be one person, because 
that is good speed to me. If anything, he's got a lead acceleration in the 40. Uh, the 20 shuttle is 403. Three cone got 669. Maybe I'm just confused on which one actually applies to the acceleration. With recent developments of you know losing out on Adam Troutman, Abdul Wilcox becomes a pretty reasonable option here. B medium, B short route running. And he's also the fastest tight end in the 449. So uh 449 at what is he? Six foot five, 241 pounds. Your boy might make something happen to go ahead and get up and get this player, but it, it all depends on how the first round shakes out. Right now, my top target probably would have to be Bradley Young. Uh can definitely go pick up Bob Burke later in the round, though, as far as the outside linebacker goes. And then corner. I mean, I want Junior Gore. But since I want uh, Abdul Wilcox, so we'll see how the first round shakes out, and if I can trade back up to early second. The Lions end up getting Chase Young. It looks like they just signed him to a five-year, one hundred seven. I mean, whatever. You want to go sign that and go play for Detroit? That's cool. Bye. You about to lose. That's all I'm gonna say. Every other sign by Lee Houston, making sure other teams from our division ain't really getting better. Oh, oh damn! This guy Zach Moss. I don't want Tampa Bay getting better. They just went to the. Oh, let's see who else. Falcons, the highest person they got is a 77. And you don't see Carolina's name up here at all. Oh, there they go. Safety at 76. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm not really mad at it, though. Uh, we need to play better within our division because it honestly would help our record have been better. This year, we did worse than last year and had the same record. So if we had even did equal to last year, we would have probably been a higher seed. Maybe we took the division. Looking at some of the tight ends that are left, Harrison Bryant, 82 speed, 82 catching. Not very good on his route running. The running back is... Kind of questionable, but I think we definitely need to get a backup here, so I'm not opposed to it. Let's get him on a two-year deal, maybe get him cheaply, uh, see what he has to offer for us. Like, I'm not trying to, well, I'm not trying to lowball him that much, but I'm not trying to overpay for a backup tight end. You know, he's not coming in to be the starter. He's not even coming in to really make that big of an impact, and we don't know if he's going to make a big impact. So two-year, kind of test him out deal, $3.3 million here. Oh, dang, I forgot. Oh, dang, I didn't see Tennessee was trying to offer him. Uh... Tennessee look like they might overpay. Let me see. Can we just all right then if that's the case, I'ma just withdraw my offer and go for somebody that's not getting offered. The older player here. So I think a two-year deal definitely works more in uh, our favor. Let's go down. Two years, five million. I won't undercut it that as much as I just did, but two years, five million there. You come in and be a backer beyond D'Angelo still make plays when we need you to, because sometimes you know, still gets hurt. But we still might be going for that tight end in that first round. Here's a deal also for Trey Flowers. Since we didn't get the other outside linebacker that we wanted, I thought we should go ahead and offer another one. If we try to get one, <clears throat> not try to draft both of those positions in the same draft and hope to get a starter. Yeah, we're going to go with Ruben Foster, and I might move him to the outside linebacker spot as well if he wants to sign. Let me give him a lower deal here one year. Boom. All right, so second round of negotiations, uh, Ruben Foster, Trey Flowers, uh, not Trey, yeah, Trey Flowers, and Foster Moray, Moray, Moru. Ooh, and there it is. Three more signings. But we love seeing contract accepted. I'm just saying it's one of the best feelings in the world as a coach to go and see people actually want to come play for your team and making us better on both sides of the ball, I feel like. Although, like I said, our offense, surprisingly, I don't really know what to kind of do with them. Like, to me personally, I don't think the offense was weak in any area other than quarterback play. And obviously, there were no real areas to kind of uh, boost that area. As we can see, Trey Flowers gets an uh, upgrade rating here right off the back. Uh, oh my goodness, bro. I've never seen a zone coverage worse. 29 zone coverage. Oh, heck no, bro. Pass coverage. You in pass coverage camp to the rest of your life. Every time I see an upgrade on the screen, it's gonna be for pass coverage. Don't ask me anything else. So far, probably worked out just some people that we can get more information on. Dylan McKinney, obviously, I didn't know what his own coverage was, so that's really what I'm trying to hopefully uncover with him and Broderick Frazier. And then also, we went ahead and got one of our corners that I have an eye on. He's got B catching, but I don't know any of his coverage ratings. So hopefully, to see what Darius McCord has, so that way we have some later round options to go pick up in the uh, back end of this draft. Go ahead and confirm this. And hopefully those three go ahead and give me the, uh, that extra uh, boost. Last week here, before we go ahead and hit that draft class up, man, week five, or uh, mock draft number five. You see nothing really changing uh, from mock draft four. Receiver jumped up five spots, one dropped down three. A couple people late in the drafts moving around. Got us picking left out something like your Bob Burke. Around three to four talent this early? Hold up. 
what's he got that what he got that makes him do that though? B tackle, B pursuit. I might have to put that on my board, but for him to jump up like that, because I don't think he's on my board. Yo, from the 46640, A catching, B man coverage. For him to jump up like that, that's got that's gotta be telling us something about that talent. I like this dude. So I just come back to check on my, my peoples and uh there's the only one that got uh any, uh, any uh completion percentage. The other two are still sitting at 40%. So they, they only gave me one of the three, which sucks, but oh D man coverage. At least I got something I need to know. D man coverage trash. 44140. I guess it just confirmed that I won't be picking up. You can't even kick return. D catching. You might be a receiver, but you ain't no DB. Oh, we into the draft, man. And you already know how we do. Draft clock, keep running, keep dripping. And we just gonna walk our way through this as we get to the end now. Uh, let's see, skip to next pick. Is it gonna like kinda, yeah. Uh, I forgot how I fixed this last time. I guess I do my draft board. Cause it's not showing the draft again. So I, <clears throat> I can't remember how I fixed it. Let me figure that out. Well, are we doing that? Like, yeah, you already know the, the deal. We got basically, what's that? Seven, eight picks, two seventh round picks, but we're gonna try, or that nine picks. I think it's nine picks, two fifths, two sevenths, and one in every other round. We're gonna try to get back up higher, at least with our second round pick to get early in the second, so that we possibly could take uh, either the tight end or the cornerback, whichever one I decide not to take that first pick, and depending on how the draft class falls. There we go. So now we're back into it. Don't know who the first two were, but there goes the first QB going to Minnesota, Josh Martinez. Uh, pick number, oh, that was pick number three. Okay, so we haven't missed too much here. So we're gonna go ahead and try to skip our way through, you know, pick by pick. Let's see who everybody's getting. Middle linebacker, make sure none of our dudes are getting got. Uh, oh, there goes Sean Hayden. We knew he wasn't probably gonna get all the way back to us, went to the Rams. Trent Fisher to the Bills there. Oh, Jason Waters going right behind him to the Packers. They're probably looking for their next quarterback. You know, Aaron Rodgers wasn't there and he just retired from the Raiders. So I'm surprised the Raiders didn't, well, probably didn't have even the option to go <laughs> for a quarterback there. Let's see what's going to happen as this draft class come down. Let me know what you guys think of the series. Did I fix everything I need to in free agency? It, ain't it awkward how like last year was one of our best defensive seasons and I still went and upgraded the defense that much just because there were so many holes that retired from that side. But the offense remained basically untouched except for one backup signing. It's literally just gonna come down to the player, Josh Garland, and see if we can get there. Now we're getting all the way to our pick here at 22. A lot of my top prospects are still on the board as another quarterback comes in here late. I think that's what, three or four for the first round? There goes Junior Gore. Ah, just missed out on all that speed. I mean, I got other options, thankfully, but that kind of makes it a little bit easier on who I want to go with in this first pick. Goes left in. Glad I made them signings, boy. I'm telling you, I'm glad. I'm glad I thought ahead. Bradley Young gone, so it's about to be our pick. I'm gonna slow things down now. Our two options here are obviously to go with Dylan Kinley, left outside linebacker. He had great speed, beef and finesse move, power move, and hit power, or. Go pick up that tight end. Now, I mean, I did have a tight end later in the draft that I had my eyes on. Day three pick, a medium route running, pass blocking with great speed. But to go pick up somebody with this much speed this late, let's see. Pick player. I don't even know what I'm about to do yet. We got two minutes, though, to think on the fly. Let's see what we can do. I mean, I can go get Travis Hawkins to him. I think we fortified our backup uh, as far as that goes. You know, we went out and signed one instead of waiting back for the draft. So, but that's our linebacker. Then he had picked and I didn't even see it. I, I guess he did. Dylan McKinney went somewhere and I didn't even pay enough attention to notice that. So, wow, that really makes it easy, man. For our first overall pick. Where's he at? There he is. Abdul Wilcox. I'm not even gonna waste no time. I'm not gonna hold up on him. I'm not gonna wait, trade back. Uh, I probably could trade it back. Get some more good people. Nah, 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 let me stop thinking about that before I lose out on this tight end that I actually really want. So 21 years old, all that speed. Hidden dev, baby. I've got two hidden dev tight ends. I think he was hidden dev. 
The intro still hitting down? I don't know, but this one is though. 88 speed, 21 years old at six foot five, 241. My tight end just got really beastly, yo. We got we signed one in free agency, D'Angelo Steele, and now Bill Wilcox to go ahead and match it up. We can honestly run formation a few times. We looking like the Patriots. Let's just hope our season don't end like this. Here we are all the way at our pick, man. And honestly, there really isn't much left. I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know that other than the picks that I had that were solid good ones, there's not many options I had left to go and things that I want to do because free agency helped us out in such a big way that if we go look at my favorites list, I've got nine people left. And we came to the draft at 16. And a lot of these guys are day threes, a couple of round two or threes, like we can go pick up Manny Jackson here. We can go get Chase Hartman and get backup offensive linemen. Let's see if any of them are worth going for the second round pick though, or should I slide back to the third? I'm not seeing any A's there. I'm seeing B run by finesse and B run by power. So definitely a more run block. Possible right tackle unless he's got A's on that pass block, which kind of doubt. Uh, let's see, A impact block, B pass block. I kind of like that strength. What you got? Uh, where's the bench? 20, uh, only 28 reps. Uh, B finesse, C run block power. Yeah, I can see they're, they're all right picks. They're all right picks. I think I'm gonna trade this back though. Nothing really standing out to me too much to want to use this pick. Yeah. All right, flag on the play. I'm gonna I'm throw a pause in, bro. I'm gonna throw, I got to. Because there's one person I forgot to check that might be possible that I can use this second round pick on. And that's center Jerry Firth. Now we got a backup there, but if this dude is up, oh, nope, never mind. He, he's gone. Yup, yup, he's gone. I know it's just a two and I'm not getting anything else, but I don't want any extra picks this year. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the Eagles second round pick next year go ahead and get us two second round picks next year and hope philly does terrible because I, there just wasn't nothing i thought we could do with that pick to actually make the team better and it wouldn't just be a waste of pick and a waste of cap space i'm dwindling up oh, well hold up go back i got a resume clock time windling down we got a minute and a half now to make this decision let's see how many people are still left on my favorites board if there's anything else we can do here and looking over there too at the you know team needs Look at how many just greens you see. The C plus at tight end, yeah, but I thought we already took care of that. Left us all linebackers still in need. Uh, I only got five people left on my board too as well. Do I have that backup in? It's not showing. I only got one. I got three on the other side, so yeah, I can just transfer them over. So Stockton, Fowler, Cole Scott, which I don't think I'll be taking. Obviously, we got our tight end. Uh, Chambers could still be a third round pick. Let me go look and see what is left at outside linebacker really fast. Is there anything? Oops. All regions. Round three and four. Round three and four. I got a lot on you, which you weren't on my board, so that's gotta say something. B, four, seven, five. B hit power. I'm not seeing enough to wanna do it, my G. I'm not seeing enough. Let's see, we got C tackling, 22 years old, four, seven, three. Could have at least been fast. Nope. We're trading this pick too, as well. Going with this pick with Washington, getting a third and a fifth round for next year. So I'll take it. So now we got two twos, two threes, and two fives next year already. We're still a lot more trades to go because there's, I'm telling y'all, there's not that many picks that I'm about to make to go ahead and finish out this draft. I'm telling you that right now. Not too many picks about to get made. All right. So here in the third, uh, the fourth round, I am going to go ahead and pick up Denzel Dalton. I was looking between him and Max Mitchell over which one I would want. Draft, 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 draft. There we go. He just had more speed. I don't know, it just said a clock expired, but it didn't show me stuff. So I think we got to him in time. He had more speed, so I went ahead with him A3 speed. I think he had like B tackling to go along with it. Uh, so we're gonna see if he develops into anything, anything kind of special here. Normal dev though, like I said, just a last minute pick, day three pick and hoping that he curves out. about to make our pick in the sixth round after making uh the fifth round basically we traded both those two picks we're able to get two fourth round picks off of those two remember we had the fifth 22nd and the fifth 31st we were able to get two more fourth round picks out of those so i'm not mad at it at all i doubt yeah anybody on my favorites list is all gone basically at this point uh we do have a couple corners that i have my eye on though uh dang they were both gone i did not see that coming all right so basically all i was looking for though anyway with speed and making sure that you didn't have anything bad as far as the coverages go Ooh, four or five, that's trash. 
Get off my screen. And here, I think we're gonna go with Ahmad Bowman. C zone coverage, 22 years old, but went 4-4-1, so the fifth fastest corner in the entire draft class. Gotta go with speed. Ooh, 92 speed is kind of sheesh. I can imagine how fast the four corners in front of him are, because two other people that had him on board were basically two people in front of him, and then we obviously knew that junior core was the fastest, so that just means there was one unaccounted for that I let slip through my grasps. There it is, man. The end of the draft is everything's kind of loading in here. It looks like we, I'd say we did pretty good. 74 overall, hidden depth, tight end here. Abdul Wilcox will be the highlight of it. 88 speed, um, 80 catching, 79 catching traffic. Route running will work on, but I like where he's at already. Vertical threat. I gotta start looking at those archetype types. I didn't even look at that. 66 overall, Denzel Dalton here, run stopper at 23 years old, only 83 speed. What is the coverage looking like though? That's what we really want to see. Man, oh no, that's accuracy. I thought that was coverage. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They really got to separate this. Oh, 57, 53, that is terrible. And then Bowman, you ain't no better. You a zone corner, 71 zone, 66 press, 59 man coverage. We work in man coverage all camp. That's the only thing you better touch every time I see you with upgrade. Man coverage. I think he ended up being a 66 overall though. So for two late round picks, I'll take that. I think that's very successful, especially being a six round at that high. Uh, fourth round is probably about what you expect. First round is a little low on the overall, but I think we got good value out of it, especially with the hidden dev. Now, if we go to the full NFL, it looks like the best player in the whole draft was not the number one pick. At least it was probably the number two. Oh, I'm on bonus. <laughs> That's why <laughs> I'm over searching the bonus. There you go. Uh, Dave Street, the wide receiver that went to Tennessee, as well as middle linebacker Tony Morrison that went two and four. Oh, and defensive tackle Anton Finch, 78 overall. The last pick of the first round, so we had a chance to get him. If defensive tackle was on my radar, I might would have, but that's probably gonna be on my radar for next season. And you can see some of the other people here, Junior Gore, who I wanted, is up being a 77 overall, which would have been great. Uh, running back, they went in the third round is up there. Let's see if we can find some other, uh, Bradley Young, who I wanted, 76 overall, 19th pick. Sucks that we missed out on him as well. Let's go look at that whole first round, because as we know, some of our dudes that we wanted went in that first round. Sean Hayden ended up being a 70 overall. Uh, look at the quarterback, 70 overall, 74 overall there. Where did, where did, oh, there you go. Dylan, man, he went that early? I didn't, that's why I didn't notice it. He went all the way up there when we were supposed to get him. 71 overall, they probably reached on that. But it really, do you ever really reach? If it's the player that you want, you can say that's a reach, but that's who you wanted at that time. So you gotta say that for you at least, that's probably the perfect pick. Like right there, we probably reached. He probably could have went back to the second. I mean, see some of the people that drafted in the first round, he fit right in, but he probably could have went back to the second. But he was the player we wanted. We went and got, we went and go got him. We went and go got him. I ain't never been the best at grammar, <laughs> but I think we got better with just those three picks. Sucks that we missed out on some of the other ones, but I really think we improved with those three picks. They're going to come in and make an impact, or at least make training camp a little bit more fun. Now, let me go adjust my roster here because we obviously gotta move one of our ends over to the right end spot. You know what I mean? I could just put them over there, but I like when their actual, um, what's it called? Their position group is actually where they're gonna be playing. So I only got one uh, right end right now. So I definitely wanna come over here to the left end and make that switch. Ooh, oh, I didn't get one. Dang, I read it wrong. They said I had four. Now it was right, but that's cause we got this dude, Jalen Mackey. So I'm gonna put that on my radar first week. <laughs> First week of free agency, we're gonna go pick up a right end uh, to kind of back up Marcus Davenport. Also probably go get a defensive tackle. Even the young ones over here are trash. That's gonna be a major focus in this next year's draft, but just to kind of hold up while the season's going, get one there. I don't know who I'm gonna have to start here. Both of y'all 66 overall, at least Dalton is one year younger. And coverage wise, Mac McCree gets it, but I think I'm still gonna go with what I had earlier in mind, which was putting Ruben Foster over there that left end spot or left outside linebacker spot and letting him kind of control that position group for this year because we can't take a step back we're close to the playoff push every single time we're in the playoffs and just barely lose so we can't afford to get worse especially on the defensive end switching him over to left outside linebacker will help fortify that a lot in my eyes middle linebackers are straight right outside linebackers are straight with our brand new starter cornerbacks marshawn Lattimore, debo mixed with uh, holmes 
Holmes will probably go to slot and let Adebo play on that outside roll. 84 man, 75 zone. And all that, I think, is with a plus four boost to our team right now. But at least our top three corners are good. And I don't got to worry about this bottom four no more. Here we go. Like I said, we need a backup. I don't know if I'm paying two million for a backup. Though. Now, y'all got to stretch on that one. Let's see. What is what can we get? What can we get? Obviously, if a backup comes in, you're gonna be missing a step and everything like that. But it's somebody very elite that won the two. This is an 82 over finesse move. That ain't bad at all. I mean, that's probably one of the best things that we're gonna get out of this power move. Who's got the best of that? 75 seem to be 78 there. Michael Brokers. So that means that 82 is the best we can do as far as either one of the moves. And at least he's a little bit better at his power move. We'll go ahead and get Jordan Jenkins. Sign him to this deal. I'm cool with that. Just to go ahead and get, a, like I said, a backup over there. Now let's go look at defensive tackle. Oh, wrong button. Over here. And over here, all that matters is block shit. That's all that I care about. Can you block shit? 78 overall. So it's sorted by that. So I can come over here to the left. Let's look at actual overalls and ages. 72 at 27 years old. That is. Oh boy, that was trash. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, defense attack is definitely going to be a main area focus. I'll pay the 1.6 1. 6, 1. 6 million, though, for him, though. Help booster up my defensive tackles, and we'll be ready for preseason, man. So, I'm going to obviously, like I said, do that on my own. Y'all got to let me know down below if y'all want to see it more often. Gaming channel is coming soon. Don't worry. I know I keep saying it. Getting everything prepared for it. Keep buying more and more stuff for it every day, and it will come soon. We will go ahead and... Uh, I'll watch the Hall of Fame introduction thing on my own, tell y'all what that boost. Well, I'll watch it right now so I don't forget to tell y'all the boost. Let's see. It. And there it goes. After watching the video, man, we got learn from the great. So plus five catching traffic and plus five release for all receivers for the next six weeks. I wonder if that covers tight ends too, because I thought with it being, it was Antonio Gates, by the way. I guess I didn't say that. I thought it would just be a boost for our tight ends, which was perfect after going and drafting one and picking up a really good one in free agency. But there it goes. That's basically our season on the line. We'll, I'll get through preseason on my own. I will start the next episode, obviously, on cut week. So y'all can see the cuts. And we'll get into week one there against Dallas. So I hope you guys are ready for it, man. Another season, new challenges, new victories, new pains. And Josh Garland's going to give me a heart attack before the end of it. You know how the season's going to go. But hopefully it leads to us getting into the playoffs as well as our actual playoff victory. Looks like we are 85 overall now with 83 defense, 88 offense, but that's without changing things around. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. It's me, your boy, Shock Too Smooth, aka Black Rokage, Black Avatar, and King Leo. And I'll catch you guys in the next rebuild video. Love y'all so much, man. Road to 5K. Let's get it. Peace.